Hello and welcome back to the second episode of breaking down what's happening across the world to see who qualifies for the Manchester Major in May. And we've had a couple new leagues enter the fray this week. So as you can see in this graphic made by the one of the full spur bunny, we've had the Oceanic region join with their first two play days taking place on the 25th and 26th of March. I also watched Partied Asia and Men is currently happening right now. But we'll cover that in the roundup for next week's video. So in this video, we're going to be looking at Europe, LATAM, South Korea, Japan, NAL, BR and the Oceanic region. So tons to sink your teeth into. So to start us off, we're going to take a look at EUL, which is the region I'm based in and probably the one which I take most interest in just because it's on at the best times. Um, and we know a fair few of the players as well. So we'll look at what happened in play day three. Play day three saw some fantastic results with Team Secret putting in a hugely impressive 7-5 victory up against Virtus Pro, the third best rated side in the world at SI. Um, and they pulled off some excellent, excellent executes. So they attacked first on Clubhouse, getting down four plants as well. And I'm going to show you a little strat that they used, the old W7M strat, while well, I guess now Furia, um, to plant five versus five against VP. It's gonna be the goal right now. And here we go. In goes the sense. Glass is gonna cover. Adrian gonna run deep now. Player in towards blue. Can Adrian get this off successfully? Savage holding firm with the cap doubles going in as well. There's no way. Adrian, another plan! There's no way! Adrian's the goal! He's the best player in the world! And VP are scrambling. They invested so heavily into church. They were convinced there was pre plays. What C4, a fucking execute that is. That's unreal. That is unreal. And we also saw Secret pull back a two versus four against VP. So VP not looking their usual selves in play day three. The other game saw Shiko and Co just dominate against ITB, winning 7-1 on border. And there were a lot of 4-4-4s typed in the chat after this insane barricade bang from Shaiko. Oh, Shaiko. Oh, oh my god! What have we just seen? Stop stream, stop stream. Oh, what have we just seen? Stop it, yeah. The next result that came on in was Wolves against Fnatic. Wolves going back to Consulate. Um, Fnatic got the 3-3 split on their defense, but then Fnatic's attacks just fell apart massively. It was almost reminiscent of the Koi era, but they didn't manage to win a single attack with Wolves coming out 7-3 victors. In our final game of the day, it was G2 who got back to winning ways with a fantastic performance up against Ents, absolutely demolishing them on Oregon 7-3. And that was our results from play day three. We'll now take a look at play day four. Team Secret continued their flawless start to the start of the EUL, winning 7-3 up against Wild um, with an impressive two versus sort of four with one player down, two versus three comeback um, in the final round to win it out on bank up against Wild, handing Wild their consecutive, consecutive, consecutive losses in a row. So it's not looking too peachy for Wild. But look at this insane shot from Groovy as he drops down into Vault to shut down, I believe it's Kanto, inside of Elevators. On blue stairs, Jim's there, ready for the drop, but gonna be caught. Kanto he gets a freebie. Kanto gets himself into Elevator. Yeah, the rest, Groovy's rotated. In a four versus Poor old Adrian, four all alone in Garage. Oh my God, that's unreal. Groovy How has he hit that? Adrian, Adrian! GG, motherfuckers! Oh, Our next game of the day saw a really tightly contested game between VP and G2. It ended up with VP winning 7-5. So they got their first win of the season up against G2. And they looked bloody impressively doing it as well. Our next game was, once again, the super team, I think... They could literally get to Manchester without losing a game or a map this season. A BDS dismantling Wolves on Skyscraper. And I mean, they got the 3-3 split. They attacked first on Skyscraper and just ran away with the game when they got onto the defense. 
But I mean, when you're attacking, and let's not forget, Shaiko has been the lowest rated player before going into this play day when they played Wolves. And I mean, it was only a matter of time until he woke up. And look at this ridiculous bit of play from Shaiko. Ground for BDS here, but obviously they need to adjust. The leak back has been lost. You know, where was he supposed to push? What ground was he supposed to take? And does anybody need to take over from that? Bibu still holding on to Geisha. He's going to have utility being thrown in at him from karaoke window. Shaiko goes in and gets a double. Huge kills from him. Make that three. And Shaiko has just ripped them apart. And just when you And our final game of the day saw Fnatic getting back to winning ways over on Oregon against Ents. Um, it was a bit of a dicey affair if you're a Fnatic fan, which I have to say I truly am. But I'm a big fan of Ents, but they seem to be struggling now they've stepped up to this T1 level a little bit. We heard Fabian and Fresh talking about it on the desk. And I think it's now that the teams are showing, well, former Valor, Ents, the respect they deserve they're probably doing a lot more homework on ends and figuring them out a little bit better as opposed to that south breach and malta off-season tournament but i mean we see a fantastic 4k from leon in the first round um to clutch up and bring it back from the brink to start them off in winning ways and i'll show you a little clip of that now oh did they line up no leon big Oh my god, Leon. Fucking hell, Leon. Leon! It's his baby. Can he make it all fight him? And really, shut those analysts up given what they were saying about him earlier on. No, he can't. Wow, Leon. So, a little bit of an update on the table for you. Topping a BDS. They played four games, won four games with a plus 19 round difference, winning 7-3, 7-3, 7-2, 7-1. God bless anyone who goes up against BDS this season because they look absolutely terrifying. The surprise package of Secret, they're the only other team with a 100% record. When we look down the bottom, we see Wild, Ents, Into the Breach. It's not looking too peachy for those teams. And then your mid-table, surprisingly are made up in 5th and 6th position of G2 and VP, with Fnatic and Wolves taking up that 3rd and 4th position. But what I want to do now is just show you a couple of stats from two of my highlight picks from this season so far in the EUL. The first player I want to highlight here is BDS's new pickup. And this is why I think BDS are going to be truly, maybe a new dynasty is being built here, because the side of BDS can do it all. If it isn't Shaiko activating, it's Yuzis. And look at this rating of this man. He has currently the highest rating out of any player inside of EUL. And look who else is in those top five spots. You've got Yuzis, Efac, and Shaiko. Sorry, Shaiko's down. Well, yeah, he's down in fifth. And then when you look at the KD as well, you've got Yuzis plus 23 and Efac plus 15. And this is the difference. With the Lens and Ranchero, Ranchero dropping out, you're bringing in currently the top rated player in all of the UL. And this is why I think they're going to be an absolute demon this coming Siege calendar year. The next player I want to look at is a new pickup, new to T1, Adrian. We know him very, very well. Um, and I have to say, he's doing incredible things. Look how many plants that man has down. He's got eight plants in three games. Three day, six in four games. But let's not forget, he's got people killing everyone left, right and centre. But Adrian, not only has he got eight plants down, he's tied with the most amount of clutches and he's also got the second highest cost as well. So Adrian is usually an entry. He was an entry for Jihu, playing this supportive role for Secret. He is truly just running into it and, and just, just performing incredibly. He's also part of my fantasy team, so I'm a very happy boy for that. But now we'll move on and take a look at what happened over in North America. So... Now we move on to NAL, and there are a lot of fixtures happening in NAL. With Mirage dropping out um, and being tossed out of the league, thank God, um, we have five games being played every day, with one team playing two matches every single play day. And we'll crack on with what happened in play day three now. Luminosity started off the day with a fantastic win over on Clubhouse, 7-4 up against Beast Coast. Luminosity looking like a little bit of a surprise bag so far in NAL, um, as we'll take a look at the next game. 
Oxygen just continue their absolute reign of dominance here. But Nua is going absolutely massive on Oregon. Yes, Oxygen got to go to Oregon again. A map which I don't know why teams keep taking them there. Because they bloody keep on slamming out everyone on Oregon. Now we move on to what was one of the most exciting games of the day. M80. The questions are being asked. Is this a new EU NA mashup of a new dominant power over in NAL? Well, the Sonics came into this looking very, very strong. And M80, they come out 8-6 victors in that game over on Oregon. And we've got a nice little clip here from Kino, who did fantastically to open up the opportunity to get a plant to put them 2-1 up on the attack initially in Oregon. And then a fantastic little 2K coming in from Spoit as well. And we'll play those clips back to back for you now. Kino was expecting this. First casualty of this round. You must hear him shuffling. Eliminates him. Surely Kino hears this, right? Like, <laughs> it's very loud. Gino Easy for Kino. Kino! He's a worm and he's doing he is coming alive! Unfortunately for him, the sun came out. Rest has got swing. The air jab is huge! What a round coming in from M80! What an execute! Only good for one kill though is the diffuser had gone down. But Scrim Beacon is doing so much as well here. You tend to not go in the way of the attack right now. They still got trouble. Spoy can go massive here. All or nothing position here, fighting for his life. Oh no, the TK! The TK! Not like this. So far on Sonics. Free for Spoy. Now also capitalize off of Merc's negligence over by Trophy. Spoy it is from Spoy. Citizen, the final kill on the round in <laughs> nice point, M Our next game of the day saw potentially, I think, two of the top teams in NAL go head to head. Um, Dark Zero, the team that made no changes, who everyone thought might continue to go on to dominate NAL after an impressive performance at SI going quite deep. But they were overcome by SSG, who can continue their 100% winning record, inspired, absolutely inspired by Ashen, who is fast becoming. Probably one of my favorite players in Siege. He's got the passion, he's loud about it, and he backs it up in the server as well. So SSG, Han, DZ, another loss inside of NAL. I've got a fantastic little clip from Ashen inside of that game. 16 and 12. 40 seconds to go. Ashen, 17 and 7. They're not going to have time to clear everything out successfully. Oh, Ashen. Ashen is unreal. And he gets back in. Holy shit, Ashen. I think that could be it. Ashen with a huge play. It's the Ashen show, ladies and gents. Ashen show. So our final game of the day saw Oxygen go up against Beast Coast. And finally, someone took Oxygen to a different map of Cafe. But Oxygen continued their winning streak, slamming out a convincing 7-3 victory up against Beast Coast as we'll go on to look what happened in play day four of NAL. Starting us off was an absolute banger of the game over on Skyscraper with Luminosity putting up a shock shock result up against M80 and we have a little clip from that man there hat going nuclear up against M80 inside of that game. Remaining now in a one versus three he's been delegated to this corner. Nice. We'll at least find one over inside of Dragon. Oh. One has to be playing the office no side, way. Be two more no way. Spoit versus Hat. No way. The ace. Oh! I'm sweating and Hat with a shot. An ace here up against M80. And what a moment for... I think we can all agree that was quite frankly an insane one versus three coming out from Hat. Bearing in mind, at that moment in time, they were 5-2 down as well. So that's to bring it back to 5-3. And then they just went on to win all their remaining defences, sweeping out M80. Our next game of the day saw SSG continue to beat some of the other favourites to do well in NAL this year. In these two play days, they overcame Dark Zero and Sonics. This time round, beating the Sonics on Consulate 7-5 with Ashen once again just performing all so well. I mean, he's still a rookie relatively, but this man is making some big, big waves in the Siege world. Dark Zero, they finally managed to get themselves a win, but boy, did they make it tough work. 
They only just managed to scrape past Loss, who a lot of people feel like Loss might be one of the worst teams in this league. But Dark Zero get the job done in overtime. 8-6. Maybe this can start the upward trend for Dark Zero moving forward in NAL. Speaking of other teams managing to get their first win of the stage, it was going to be wild card in a back and forth battle over on bank, going to max OT and winning 8-7 up against, unfortunately, Beast Coast on the losing side once more. Our final game of the day, and you've got to feel a little bit for Loss, who it was their double play day this week. Um, well, in this play day, they managed to take DZ to OT, losing 8-6, and then taking the Sonics deep on bank to only lose 7-5 as well. So a little bit gutting for Loss in their double play day, but now we'll have a quick look at the table and see where we're sat after play day four in an NA out. So I don't think a lot of people would have put this out there, but Oxygen have played three and won three. You could argue that they maybe played against the lesser teams so far in the tournament, whereas Space Station have gone up against some really, really tough sides. And they're also the only undefeated side. Bearing in mind that Oxygen and SSG haven't had their double play day yet. So there's still potentially in the next few weeks a chance for them to shoot even further ahead in the lead. I think looking at the bottom three, Wildcard, Lost, Beast Coast, I think a lot of people would maybe put those three teams down there. But Dark Zero are definitely struggling a little bit. So still a huge amount to play for as I just want to look at one man's stats. And I mentioned him earlier and we'll bring them up now. So, I mean, the main man himself, Ashen, all you have to do is look at that KD plus or negative. He's currently plus 21. And let's not remember that he has played one less game than the majority of other teams in the league. And his rating is a huge, huge 1.44. And let's not forget, they've already gone up against Sonics and Dark Zero. So he may be able to even boost those stats and farming it against some of the weaker teams inside of NAL. But that's it for the NAL. And now we'll turn our attention to what happened over in Japan. So now we move over to what happened over in Japan. On play day one, Kino Trophy came out on top against Exist. Crest was successful up against Enterforce 0.36, very, very convincingly 7-2. And then we had a bit of a shock victory with top of the table, CAG losing up against Vite. And then our final game of the day was Scars, the team that's probably expected to maybe do the best within Japan, but struggling a little bit this season, securing a very, very solid 7-2 victory up against father's back and then the woes continued in play day two for father's back with kintrophy getting their second win up against them convincingly 7-2 once more cag found themselves back to winning days up against enterforce three point sorry point 36 7 1 and then we had vite beating scars vite a team that have secured themselves second spot in the table as well with three wins and one loss. We'll have a look at that table shortly. And then there was a fantastic match between Crest and Igzis. There was also an absolutely chaotic round with an Echo that was maybe just a, less than a fraction of a second. The Echo drone gets sent up to the ceiling to deny, to deny the plant in a massive operator deficit but gets shot out just before the stun can come out. And I'll let the clip play now. I mean, I don't speak Japanese, but the commentators go absolutely fucking mental. And there's no surprise as this took it all the way to 6-6 and going into overtime as well. And we'll play that clip now, then have a look at the table. So, さあ、スモークを焚いて車線を切りますが、すごいとこ来た。妖怪の後ろから来た。しかしそれと言えばここでチョップ良かった。さあ、そしてリリーが歩くりを勝った。さあ、また来た。マービーの位置。この位置を止
having played four and only dropped one, well, only dropped one map, losing one map. Tag up there as well. Existing Crest performing maybe over expectations with Scars being that team that has really underperformed so far in the Japan League. Um, so convincing leads so far for the side of Kag and Vite. But plenty of play days still to go in Japan. And it's heating up a little bit in that region. As there's a few teams shuffling around that lot, a lot of people would be expecting to be in the position that they're in. So now we head over to Brazil. Unfortunately, I didn't get the opportunity to watch party um, on this past Saturday as I went for a big night out and I was also massively hung over on Saturday morning and when we did the EU Open Quals, the last of those on stream. But we had pretty expected results coming into this one with W7N winning convincingly up against MIBR. Ninjas in Pyjamas with a little bit of a good response after they've not been performing so well, but looking a little bit dicey against Fluxo, scraping a 7-5 victory. Base Clan going deep up against Black Dragons. I have to say, Black Dragons have really impressed me with how they play this season. And I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe sneak their way into that top three or at least get through in the LCQs. Furia get the job done against the ever impressive Vivo Keed Stars, who I think, similarly to Black Dragons, usually you have your top four expected in BR of W7M, Furia, probably Liquid and nip this season but i think keyed stars and black dragons are really showing up some serious serious competition and i mean speaking of a liquid the wheels have fallen off completely for them this season i don't know what's going on in that team but they are getting it entirely wrong with e1 coming out seven one victors that's right seven one victors up against team liquid as we'll move into play day two and have a look at that. So moving over to play day four, I did get the opportunity to watch the majority of these games. So my insight might be a little bit better. There is so much siege going on that I almost feel it's impossible to watch every game. But for you who miss it, hopefully these videos give you an insight into it. And boy, Furia Fluxo was insane. Um, Fluxo was 6-3 up. They were defending on Clubhouse, but... Furia, that never say die attitude that we saw them do at SI up against FaZe in that grand final came to fruition once more, led by the ever incredible Herds. I mean, this man had one hell of a game. And also inside of that, we did see an interrogation coming out from Fluxo, who, I mean, I love an underdog and Fluxo could have got it over the line so many times, but Herds inspired that com comeback. And I just want to show you a couple clips from that game, including the interrogation and Herds just being himothy. Herds is him. All right, elsewhere, Fluxo might be Down about to be floor. Furia. And for Fluxo, aside from that cav, I mean, this reads as a full anchor setup. The Zotos for the hard breach walls. But, oh, oh no, my God, no, no, the interrogation! No, no. With the intel even, an interrogation! Oh, Herds falls, no Akashi way. follows up on a JV, and all of Furia are running for the hills. And flux are a chip. Herds just oh, repositioned right so well. In. Herds has the read. Herds. One kill, a second Herds. on the window. The third on the Cappy Tau. Oh, it's Nade again. Flawless it. for Furia as they move to What's match the point. fuck? The Herds, so man. Are starting to run he is cold. outrageous. I just wanted to bring up those stats in case you missed the game. But look at that from Herds. 20 and 10, ladies and gentlemen. 75% headshot and a rating of 149. For those who don't know, that's ESB, that's expected score. And if you're performing at 100, you're doing what's expected of one person. So Herds performing almost as one and a half human beings, inspiring that comeback up against Fluxo. But we'll now have a look at the other games that took place on play day four in BR. So Cade Stars, once again, putting in an impressive showing. Um, getting to five rounds, but not ma quite managing to get it over the line into overtime. But I think it's truly showing that Vivo Cade Stars can compete with the best in Brazil. Losing 7-5 to Furia and 7-5 to FaZe, it shows that they've got the makings of being a top competing team. They just need to unlock that little bit extra to get those games over the line or even just get points from those games. Team Liquid, once again, the wheels have just fallen off. I don't know what's going on in that side, but they just look... Quite frankly, dog shit, for the want of a better term. But W7M winning 7-3 against them. Elsewhere, I praised them a minute ago, 
but Black Dragons fumbled the bag a little bit. And after such an impressive, so nearly performance against FaZe the previous day, they lose out 7-5 to MIBR. And then E1, what a week for them. 7 one up against Liquid, and then 7 3 on Consular up against Nip. The boys on the LAN studio were going absolutely mental. The E1 lads were going crazy. Um, and for Nip and Liquid, it just, I don't know what's going on there. But these two teams are in serious, serious trouble unless they turn this around soon. But let's not forget, Liquid haven't really played up against some of the bigger teams in the league. And we'll take a quick look at the BR table. So here we have it, FaZe on top looking ever so impressive. W7M and Furia. I mean, we would expect these three teams to be here. But then my two surprise packages who are almost so close are Vivo Cade Stars and Black Dragons sort of in that mid-table, sneaking into maybe the top three. Um, but down the bottom, you've got Team Liquid on zero points with minus 16 rounds. They need to turn it around and also Ninjas in Pyjamas. Um, it's all going a little bit wrong for the teams out in Brazil that have sort of that, they've got that, I, well, I went to SI and I played in the show match and I was walking around um, with Ness next to me. And honestly, he's like a god in Brazil. It's mental. But they need to fix something sooner rather than later because those Brazilian open quals, which if you're in those bottom three, four spots you drop down into, are packed with a ton of exciting gunners. So it's do or die time because they've already played three or four games and they need to pull their fingers out and really figure out what is going wrong. But we'll now take a look at what happened over in Korea. In Korea, in Play Day 3, it may have been one of the quickest Rainbow Six broadcasts I have ever seen. With D-plus Kia continuing to be impressive, winning 7-1. PSG Talon just continued to dominate with a 7-1 victory up against Blossom. Fairex find themselves back to winning Way, who have had a very shaky start to the season with a 7-3 victory. Then Web L winning 7-1 as well. I mean, literally, I mean, <laughs> it, it was one of the fastest streams I've ever seen in my life, which I think just goes to show the disparity in quality that we're seeing out in Korea with these top tier Korean sides just being so dominant in comparison to some of the other teams in the league. But we'll take a quick look at what happened in Play Day 4 over in Korea as well. Play Day 4, I mean, it was still quite a quick day as well with Fear X. They had just got back to winning ways, but getting slammed out 7-3 by BSG. I, I have to say, Fear X, they just seem a little bit all over the place. They either get it so right or they get it so wrong. I'm not entirely sure what's going on in that roster, but they just lack that sort of um, consistency, which you really need to be competing in a league like this. Webel win again up against BNA. Maybe the surprise package inside of Korea and um, sort of replacing Fear X as one of these challenging sides with D-plus Kia and Talon. Elsewhere, D-plus Kia win again up against Blossom with an impressive 7-4 victory. And PSG Talon, under the guidance of Fabian, this team can't seem to do much wrong. As we'll take a quick look at the table and see where everyone's sitting pretty or not quite so pretty over in Korea. So not unsurprisingly, we have our two top teams of D-plus Kia up against PSG Talon as well. And I mean, look at the round difference here for PSG Talon. If you can see it, it's plus 22 with D plus Kia with plus 14. And what I'm hugely excited about is on play day, what would it be? One, two, three, four, five. I don't know why I can't just count in my head. On play day five, we're gonna have PSG Talon up against D plus Kia. I think this is gonna be the real mark of what Fabian has done with the boys over at PSG Talon to see if they can just continue this absolute reign of dominance. That I, I wouldn't call them a super team, um, but they're doing what BDS are doing in EUL over in Korea. But I think this will be a true test of them when they play up against D plus Kia in the next play day. Um, Fear X, as I mentioned, is struggling massively. Um, they've only managed to secure one win, which is, I think, after their performance at SI, getting out of the groups um, has been bit of a shock result for those Korean and um, South Korean league fans um, but now we'll move on over to what happened in the first play day for OCE so now we begin the play days of OCE this is one which I'm hugely excited about getting into with me moving out over to Australia in June and um, so I'm trying to get around it and amongst it as much as possible 
hence the mullet and the mustache. <laughs> um, but I think this is going to be sort of a battle between three top teams of Antic, Man, Esports, and also Bliss. Um, and they play four game days a day, and we'll take a quick look at some of the results that came in in play day one. So I don't actually have an official graphic, so I've just grabbed this off Wikipedia. But if you're on the left-hand side of the bracket fixture, it's looking all good for you. But Antic performing with an impressive victory up against Kelton's Knights 7-3. Our second game of the day saw Man Esports hashtag the Chef Jeff and player Man in Manchester 7-5. Odium as well coming out 7-4 victors up against 6T. Um, 6T made up of a lot of OGs of the OCE region, not able to get the job done. And then Bliss, I mean, they were the eighth best team in the world coming in with an impressive, impressive 7-0 victory. And I've just got a little clip from that um, Bliss game where I start to get on the Bliss bandwagon once more. On AKD so far, oh, oh, another Brendo. one. Come on, give me one more, baby. Give me one more. Brendo, finish it off. Jakenna doing what Jakenna does best, baiting the and losing it anyway. Love to see that. Brendo! Four rounds straight and circular spheres. And so, so play day do do? Play day two kicked off once again bright and early at 7.15 in the morning. Um, I am planning on watch partying the majority of these OCE games. So if you're an early riser on Monday or Tuesdays going forward over the next few weeks, Get yourself over to Tom J Sherlock on Twitch um, and you can join us watching the OCE games, which are quite frankly, hugely entertaining. And we also saw a green, green, a grim B kill in one of the games as well. I'll put that in after we look through at the table. Um, but we had some very exciting games with um, Bliss up against Antic as our highlight match of the day and this is how the results came in so we have bliss looking a little bit shaky to start the game off up against antic coming out impressive 7-4 victors we then had man lfo coming out 7-4 victors against kelton knights and just look at this game winning kill it's got two pokeballs in it and a quick peek head fire head fire headshot coming out from player and he puts in the fantastic shush celebration at the end as well and i'll let you have a quick look at that clip now because it it's quite frankly fucking sick but his kill and got the down needed josh and vinny to try and do it against player bounce and pat is sneaking around on the ground for info oh oh my god what what, what in god's name was that player he is a goddamn player that's the game Oh my goodness, what an abrupt finish to a round that certainly looked like it was Kelton tonight's way. Man, LFO has just... So here we have our table in OCE with Odium winning both their games, top of the table with a plus 10 round difference. Join it with an identical fashion of Bliss as well. Um, Man, Esports as well, 2-0. Unfortunately for Circular Spears, it could not be any worse. I said Team Liquid are having a stinker. They've played a fair few more games than Circular Spears, but Circular Spears yet to pick up a single round. You've got a feel for what's happening over there in Australia for Circular Spears. But one game to look out for on Monday at early in the morning is going to be Team Bliss up against Man Esports. And that brings us to a roundup of what happened in the first two play days of OCE. And I'll just end it with the clip of the bees where someone dies to a direct impact from the bees, which is quite frankly something... I have never seen before and it's pretty wild. Definitely sometimes a sting in the tail of that grim gadget. Two Cover. or two smoke grenades. Taking low HP and no opportunity to deny this plant. Two gas canisters, but no way to make it work. Oh, he's just round the corner. How is this 1v1 going to pan for him on one HP? Bap and rounding this corner. Oh, the bees! Shots. He gets hit by the bees! <laughs> 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 He killed him with the bees! <laughs> oh my goodness. I love OC, man. He killed him with the bees! <laughs> he literally just stung him out of the server. <laughs> A sting. Now we come on to our final region, which is going to be LATAM. Unfortunately, I was very much in bed early um, during this week, which is uns which is quite surprising for me. Going to bed for midnight is not something I do a lot, but I seem to be doing it a lot recently. Maybe it's because I'm the ripe old age of 33. Um, but we have our results coming in from LATAM. Because of the days it's spaced out, those those third play day games, 
sorry, those fourth play day games will be happening tonight. So we don't quite have the results of those. So we only have it from one play day. Um, but the teams to look out for there are NXT in the North League winning once more. Revan coming back to winning ways. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then I think realistically from Latam South, our team to look out for are Vasco, who just stomp out a hugely impressive 7-0 victory. I think those that is really going to be the team that's probably going to progress out of Latam South. And we'll have a quick look at the table now. So Latam South, you have Vasco on top with a plus 17 round difference in three games. I mean, the most they could have is a plus 21. So they've only dropped, what was that, four rounds in their three games. I think far and above the most impressive side inside of Latam South. And we'll take a quick look at the Latam North table as well. So Latam North, it does look like it's going to be a battle between maybe Six Karma, Revan and NXT players to see who can get that top spot. I'm obviously a little bit biased. I want the UK massive and the European influence of Revan to come out on top. But let's not forget they did drop one game. So all still to play for over in Latam North. Not looking as convincingly one-sided with NXT having played three and won three, but only with a plus six round differential. So quite close games for them, um, but still a lot to play for in that league. Um, so who knows what's going to happen with that one. Let's not forget there is only one spot coming out from Latam. So after these group tables are done, Latam South, South will be going up against Latam North to battle it out to see who gets that spot in Manchester. And that brings us to the roundup of what happened over the past week of Rainbow Six Siege. Next week, we will also have the inclusion of the Asian League and also the MENA region as well. Um, and a little bonus clip um, at the end of the video before the outro plays is going to be a fantastic mirror trick coming out from BDS up against Wolves. If you try this in your ranked games, please at least place your other mirror window first before you get blown up by the Exothermic. But thank you very much for watching and for those who have stayed till the end enjoy the little mirror clip trick mirror trick clip um, and i'll see you next wednesday or if you want to come and join us because we're going to be watch partying as many games as possible in the lead up to manchester you can find your way over to the stream at tom j sherlock um, it is also tom j sherlock on twitter instagram youtube or well, if you're on youtube you know that and on twitch as well so get around it get amongst it don't be shy your mother's weren't um, and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye bye. And that's the problem. You're always oh my God, they're going to the mirror trick. And it is draining. He's going to mirror gonna trick. See the little mirror trick here? Hmm. No I way. Mean, he's going to slide soon, right? I mean, he's going to get away with it as well as you realize. No, he's going to get away with it too. Oh my Very God. smart. For anybody who he's just mirror tricked him. Any of you out? For anybody who didn't know.